when you meditate as when you go through your life. It's often useful to think of the mind as a committee. There are lots of different views, lots of different intentions. And it's up to you to decide which ones you want to identify with. You have the choice. The more mindfulness and the more alertness you develop, the clearer you see that you do have that choice. So even though we may be creatures of habit, we don't have to be. And even though we may tend to side with maybe two or three different members in the committee, if we see that they're unskillful, that their ideas are not going to lead to true happiness. If we have the mindfulness and alertness, we can identify with other members of the committee. This is what we do as we meditate. We're creating a new member of the committee, or strengthening one. The member that wants true happiness, that wants to train the mind. And of course, if it's only one member in the committee and there are lots of others who don't play along, you're not going to get very far. You've got to learn how to get the majority on your side. And one of the ways of doing this is to make the meditation as comfortable and as one person once said, or several people have said, delicious as possible. There are ways of breathing that feel really good. And you want to sensitize yourself to what kind of breathing feels good right now. So you learn to associate the practice of meditation with very comfortable feelings of pleasure, ease, fullness, rapture in the body. So try to breathe comfortably. Ask yourself what kind of breath would feel really good right now. You don't have to do a lot of, think about a lot of breaths, just one really good breath right now. How would that feel? Where do you want to feel it? And let it happen. And when you're done with that breath, ask yourself, okay, who wants the next breath? You have the freedom, you have the choice. And in this way, it's not one lonely member of the committee. The members that like physical pleasure, that like to have a sense of being settled and at ease, they come to your side. As for the other members, you know they're there. So you have to be watchful. They'll slip in at any time if you're not careful. So you have to be very alert, very mindful. And not be surprised if you find yourself wandering off. Remind yourself, this is normal. It's going to happen. Think of the present moment as a field of opportunities, field of possibilities. This is an image that the Buddha uses in the Khan. He says that your karma is like a field, and your awareness in the present moment is like a seed. Actually, there are lots of seeds here, and it's up to you to decide which seeds you're going to water. The water here is a sense of craving, a sense of desire, which is not necessarily bad. There's the desire that causes suffering, but there's also the desire that's part of the path. It's your motive force and right effort, the effort that tries to abandon unskillful qualities and develop skillful ones. So as you meditate, you're watering the skillful desire. Then after a few minutes, you find yourself watering something else. So don't be surprised, but be ready when that happens, to be able to pull yourself back. Don't get discouraged. 
This is normal. It's so easy for people when they come to meditate to start measuring themselves. Say, I'm this kind of person, I'm that kind of person, look at the way I meditate, it's horrible. I'm going to go nowhere, I'm hopeless. When you find yourself getting entangled in thoughts like that, stop and think about all the people in the world. All the people who've meditated, have meditated, will meditate. Are you really so different from the rest of them? And we read in texts how the mind of the skilled meditator goes from one state of jhana to the next. But we can also read about the meditators who've had a lot of problems. And yet they overcame those problems, they overcame those limitations. So it's not hopeless. And it's useful to reflect on the pattern of the, the night of the Buddha's awakening. After his mind had settled down, he started thinking about his own past. And his past didn't go back just 35 years to his birth. It went further and further and further back, aeons and hundreds of aeons of lifetime after lifetime. And he could have spent all that time just getting involved in the stories. But he didn't. And he also didn't go straight from there to looking at the present moment in terms of the Four Noble Truths, which was his ultimate insight. There was an insight in between, where after reflecting on his many past lifetimes, he asked himself, how about other beings, other people, other animals? Do they go through the same pattern? And is there a pattern to this? Is it all random? And it was insight that, one, the principle of rebirth applied to everybody, and two, there was a pattern underlying it, the pattern of karma, or action, the types of actions you do based on skillful or unskillful intentions, which are informed by right or wrong views. That's the principle that shapes. this cosmic process. It was only after he had seen the whole process writ large that he then returned to the present moment and looked at the issue of how is suffering conditioned right here, right now, and what can be done right here, right now, to put an end to it. In other words, he came to the present moment after having contemplated the universal principles so that he was no longer concerned about what kind of person he was, but simply the question of suffering in and of itself, or stress in and of itself, and its cause, as these things are directly perceived. So if you find yourself getting entangled about thoughts about what kind of person you are, whether you're obsessive, compulsive, or lazy, or whatever, just step back and think in the more universal terms. Everybody coming to meditation has problems. Even the Buddha had problems when he first came to meditate. It took him years to settle on the right method. So this takes the sting out of the difficulties that you, you encounter, because they're all part of the normal process. And they can all be overcome. Have that confidence. And then just keep coming back, coming back, coming back. and realize that even though there may be unskillful habits shaping the way you act and think, you also have skillful potentials. If we didn't have some skillful potentials, you wouldn't be here. They're in the field as well, where there are these skillful members of the committee, potentially skillful members of the committee, that can be encouraged. So you can think of it as encouraging the right members of the committee who've been pushed off to the side in the past, but you're going to bring them more into the center of things. Or you can think of it as a field. Which of these seeds in the present moment are you going to water? Because an important principle in the Buddhist teachings on karma is that the present moment is not totally determined by the past. You have your choices.
there are many different seeds in your field. So you have the choice as to which ones you're going to water, which ones you're going to encourage. Out of all the different potentials that are there, so that your actual experience of the present moment is helpful. You're focusing on the right things, you're perceiving the right things. The Buddha talks of meditation, concentration practice, as a perception attainment. You hold a certain label in your mind. You know, there are many ways you could label the present moment, things that you could focus on. Because what the labeling is, basically, you bring something out of a background. What psychologists call figure and ground. What's the figure you're going to focus on? At the beginning of the session, you decided you're going to focus on the breath. So try to see everything in terms of the breath. There are other things you could focus on right now. They're all equally true. You could focus on the, the sound of the music out there, but that wouldn't help the meditation. You could focus on issues you have at home, issues you have at work. And they may be perfectly real, but they're not going to help the meditation. Or you could simply focus on the fact that here you are breathing. You're alive. And it's important that you're breathing. Part of the mind, part of the committee that's concerned about issues at work or issues at home would say, you can't take time to think about your breath. Good grief. All these other things are more important. Well, remind yourself, if you didn't have the breath, those other things would be totally meaningless. And it only stands to reason that the breath, which is the energy that keeps you alive, that energizes the body, and could be potentially soothing or irritating to the mind. If the breath flows smoothly and you're with it consistently, the body will be in better shape, your mind will be in better shape to deal with whatever issues you have in other areas. And it's also a much more soothing perception, because when you think about work, that carries a whole lot of other perceptions in its train. The perception of breath, what does that carry? It just keeps bringing you back here to the present moment. If you try to remember your, your breaths of the past, you pretty much draw a blank. And they're certainly not around for you to look at right now, but you do have this present breath. This is the one you can know directly. And it's something you can actually know more directly than almost anything else. Because it's right here, and it's happening right now, and you can sense it, whether it's comfortable or not. That's up to you to choose, up to, for you to decide. To hold on to this perception, just breath, energy, in the body. And the question that asks, what kind of breathing would feel good right now? Keep encouraging that perception, keep encouraging that question. You think of them as committee members. Okay. Keep bringing that committee member to the center of the floor. If you think of the seeds in the field, okay, these are the ones you want to just keep on watering. So they grow into a good experience at the present moment, continually, more and more consistently. And in just this way, you begin to see how much you really do shape the present moment and how much potential there is for creating a state of well-being in the present, simply by holding on to the right perception, the right intention, asking the right question. You can encourage this seed in this part of the field. As for the unskillful seeds or the unskillful voices in the committee, 
You just let them wither away. In this way, you show to yourself that the present moment is not just something that's happening to you. You're shaping it, and you can learn how to shape it skillfully. You can turn it into a path to the end of suffering, to the end of stress. You may not know if the path goes all the way there, but at least you know for the time being you've got a good spot right here. You want to maintain this good spot. You have to be heedful, because there are those other members of the committee, those, those other seeds in your field of karma. But for the time being, these are the ones you want to encourage. So keep reminding yourself, you have the choice. The issues of past karma may come up in all kinds of shapes and form. But you don't have to be scared by them. There's always the potential for something skillful to be done in the present moment. that traditional image of Mara attacking the Buddha on the night of his awakening. He came with his army and they fired arrows at him. And in one version of the story, the arrows all turn into flowers and fall at the Buddha's feet. In other words, if you develop the right state of mind, as the Buddha said, with limitless goodwill, limitless equanimity, ability not to be overcome by pleasure or pain confidence in the face of whatever comes up. You can turn your past bad karma into flowers at your feet. So have confidence in your power to shape the present moment, and your ability to water the right seeds. find the proper alliance in your inner com committee. So that regardless of what's happening outside, you can inhabit this healthy, solid sense of well-being. Even though it may seem that the sense of well-being right now is far away, the potential is here, and you have the ability to develop it. Always be confident of that fact.